Welcome to August Lico Challenge. Today's problem is find right interval. Given a set of intervals for each interval i, check if there exists an interval j whose start point is bigger than or equal to the end point of interval i. So we'll take our interval i's end and we'll find the minimum interval for the start point of any interval inside of our list. So say that we had this list here, you can see the end point for this interval i. Um, interval, the first interval here has a start point that's less than, or I'm sorry, equal to or greater than the end point of interval i. So we would do zero. Same thing here. Two's ending interval, um, we see that the minimum start interval is one. So it's kind of like sorting it in a way, uh, but but not quite because these intervals could overlap each other. Uh, so something to note is that the end point is always bigger than the start point, yeah, obviously, and none of the intervals have the same start point. So what I'm gonna do is take this example here and let's just see what it looks like. Oh, actually, I'll take this example. This might be a little bit better. And I apologize for all the noise. It's kind of hectic inside my house right now. So, so what I'm going to do is add another interval here. There's one that's just kind of not in place, say like 10 or 11. So what would be the answer to this? This would be, uh, well, uh, this would end up being three, right? This would end up being two. This would end up being three, and this would end up being negative one, because obviously this one's endpoint has no start point that's uh, greater than or equal to it. So uh, one way we could solve this problem is just to kind of brute force it. So for every index, we'll just check all throughout, hey, find the index point where the, the start is greater than, um, yeah, the start is greater than or equal to the endpoint of this interval. But make sure it's the it's the smallest one. So we can check every single time to see which one's the smallest one. If we can't find one, we'll just make it negative one. Otherwise, we'll return the index. But obviously, we're going to have to do that for every single number, right? So, or every single index. So that ends up becoming like a n, n squared time complexity. So we can do better than that. Let's think about like how we could structure these. Uh, let's start with getting the, the starting points. So say that this is like starts and this would look something like 1, 2, 3, 10. Now what about the ends? Um, that would be 4, 3, 4, 11. So one thing to note is these in itself aren't going to really tell us anything. We have to also store the index points or the index numbers attached with these starts and ends. And the reason for that is what what we can do is sort both these starts and ends. Maybe we can use like a heap structure and pop off while we go through the ends because the ends are what matters. We will check to see can we find a start point that's uh, greater or equal to this end. And let's like so say that we sort this one. And now we're going to check all these ends. We'll say, hey, is this one greater than or equal to? Nope. Nope. Oh, this one is. So this one attach the row number. Uh, but we don't know the row number here, right? So we're going to have to attach these into like some sort of tuple. And that way we can create this output that's going to have the um, the index numbers for all these st all these ends. And then we will sort that by the index number and output just the um, these indexes. Okay, so <laughs> that's a little bit confusing, but it'll start making more sense as I code it out. So start by, let's say, we'll have three structures. We'll have the starts, the ends, and we'll have an output. And these will all just be lists. But the starts and ends are going to be a heap. And I'll use the heap queue method to take care of that. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is, um, let's see, four... <sighs> for uh, the index number and the start and end 
and enumerate intervals. And the first thing I want to do is heap Q dot heap push into starts. I'm going to make a tuple of, well, the start and the index number. And I'll do the same thing with the ends. And now these are going to be sorted. It's a, it's a heap. It's a min heap. So that'll be sorted in order of the start and the ends. And, and now we have our structure to help us out here. Um, I'm also going to add something um, to our starts. I'm going to add a, a final one for this negative in case that we couldn't, can't find anything. So uh, to do that, I just will input a tuple of, let's say, a float. And how about a start of infinity with the index number negative 1. So if we get to this point, then we know that we should just put negative 1 for everything else. Now, all right, so now we have our structures that we need to get this problem solved. Uh, so while we have ends, right, because we're going to be checking the ends to see if we can find the minimum start. So while we have the ends, let's first pop off the uh, start and index number, and I'll call that I, I guess, I start. <sighs> Uh, let's see. So heap q dot heap pop off of our start, and we'll check. Well, oh wait, we need this in a while loop, of course. So uh, how do we do this? So first we'll pop off the end and i end. Let's say, and now we'll have an inner loop that says, okay, while we have starts and the start is less than less than the end then we want to continue popping off, right? So, so that reminds me, I need to also put a start here. I'll make that a float of negative inf to make sure that we at least enter one time here. So what I'll do is pop off the start and I start and now we'll check hey is start greater or equal to greater than or equal to yeah greater or equal to the end because if it is we just break and now uh, let's add to our output we'll say output append what do we want to um, append well we only care about the index number right we don't care about the actual start and ends at this point. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I will put in the I, uh, let me think. Yeah, I guess I'll put in the I end and the I start. Because when we sort it, we want it to be sorted by the index numbers. And this is going to be the thing that we return. Is that right? I believe that's right. So let's first see what how that works out. Um, so finally, I think that might be it. So um, once we do that, I think we just return our output, but we're going to have to restructure it a little bit. Uh, we'll say, all right, for, let's see, i1, i2 in sorted output, what do we want to return? We want to return the I, i2s, right? Or let's see, uh, i starts. All right, so let's see if this works. I uh, might have messed this up. Oop. Expected two arguments, got one. Oh, okay. Um, Want to put this starts. And I also think I need to change my, <laughs> my case here. Uh, let's see, let's try this one. Okay, so, okay, all the syntax, syntax, yep, got to make that a tuple. Okay, so that looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. 
and accepted. So what is the time complexity on this? N log N, right? Because all, all the sorts and all the heaps. Um, as far as space complexity goes, I believe it's N because we need to have all the starts and ends for uh, inside of our heap. So, and our output, obviously. So, uh, it could be better than this. Yeah, probably, but um, this seems to be good enough. So, I think I'm going to end it here. Thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.